Photoshop just introduced a new tool, and you want this, called the Selection Brush. It brushes in selections, boring, but it also doubles as, get this, Photoshop's most tricked out retouching tool. You want this. I'm working inside Photoshop Beta, by the way, at which point I'll get to the new Selection Brush by going to the Lasso tool, and there it is at the top of the flyout menu. Who knew? Might change, by the way. But in any event, I want you to know that this tool is very different from the pre-existing selection brush inside Photoshop, which is the Quick Selection tool. And so this tool, Quick Selection, is a little bit smart in that it detects edges. Hard to predict, but still. And it's familiar in that it generates a marching ant style selection outline nice and animated and so forth whereas the selection brush is not automated it's just a dumb brush if you will and as soon as I select it it's going to turn the selection into a pink blob at which point I would just go ahead and paint some more to add to it so some of you may be reminded of the quick mask mode actually put that out of your mind it's nothing like that but it is a different way of seeing the selection so all this pink gook that I'm adding to this image. That is selection outline, if you will. So if you want to clean things up, if you want to start anew, go to the select menu and choose deselect or press control D, command D on the Mac. Isn't that fascinating? Sure it is, which is why you're going to want to subscribe. I'm telling you more information coming in the future, which is why you'll want to turn on notifications. But even more important, I'm going to paint some more. And on this photograph, which comes to us from the Dreamstime image library, link in the description. And the reason I'm doing this is because let's say you want to see this selection. That's what it is in terms of familiar marching ants. Then just switch to any other tool. Doesn't matter which tool. I'll switch to the zoom tool and notice I get marching ants like so. And then I'll switch back to the selection brush and it, it appears pink at least by default. And another way to work, you might think of it this way, is M. Press the M key for marching ants. It's actually for the rectangular marquee tool, but still works just the same. And now I could shift drag, let's say, to add to the selection, and I get more marching ants, or at least they're shaped differently now. And as soon as I switch back to the selection brush, it's all a bunch of pinkness. So I'm just seeing the selection in a different way. If I want to add to it, because it's got a little plus sign in the cursor, it's just like the quick selection tool actually, then you just brush away, so you don't have to press the shift key if you don't want to. If you want to subtract from it, you press the alt key or the option key on the Mac. See that little minus sign in the cursor? And then you paint, like so. If you want to paint in straight lines, you click and you shift click. Isn't that just amazing? Here, you might find this useful. I'll press control D, command D on the Mac to deselect the image. And then I'll surround her face. I'll encompass the whole thing. I could paint all the way to the beginning or I could paint most of the way to the beginning. About here is good enough. And it's going to fill it in. Isn't that super? But hey, this is something to watch out for. If you go too far, as I'm about to do, I'm doing a terrible job, but let's say I want to make it nice and careful. So I go back out here and paint some more and it's not going to work. So you, you, you can only just paint once around. That's it. That's the way things work out right now. All right. So I'm going to deselect the image because I want to tell you if this were all this were to the tool, if this was it, first of all, I wouldn't have even recorded this video. And secondly, I tell you, it's the dumbest tool since the newest tool before it, the adjustment brush, which I also hate, but I don't hate this one. And I'll tell you why, because it's wrong to think of it as a selection tool. Instead, you want to think of it as a retouching tool. So let's compare it to the spot healing brush, which samples from inside the active image and the remove tool, which has been taught, it's been trained on the carcasses of a million other images. And so it has what's known as pat pattern recognition, but it is not AI, it's not generative AI. Whereas this new tool is, if treated properly. So let's imagine, I'm gonna press and hold the Z key and zoom in on her lip right there. And now I'll just go ahead and paint over her lip. Obviously I'm painting too much and the pink doesn't really show up that well, which is why you can change the color if you want to. Go to the gear and change the color to green, let's say. That's gonna show up better. It's also gonna show me that I've painted too much. So I'll alter option drag to paint away. You can do this kind of thing with a remove tool, not with a spot healing brush, but 
what's great about this is you don't need an independent layer. Notice over here in the layers panel, we have a flat background and nothing more. And it's still going to generate a new layer as soon as I click generative fill and then just press the enter key in order to send it on its way. Now, what Photoshop is doing at this point is communicating with Firefly, which as you may know, is the online generative AI utility that's out there. So you need a live internet connection and we get this retouched lip. So it's looking different than it was before. And we have three different variations, which is not something you get with either the spot healing brush or the remove tool. With those tools, you just have to accept what you get. And if you don't like it, you undo and paint again. You have to redo the entire painting. So this is a lot more like the remove tool inside Lightroom or Camera Raw. And then if you don't like that, you can just click generate to, you know, add some more variations. You also have an independent layer. It's got some sparkles, which indicates that it's a special kind of layer, a generative layer, which is also a smart object. So it, it does all that non-destructive stuff. You can scale it. Hey, real quick, simple tool, simple purpose, right? But let's say you want to get more out of it or work more quickly, or you just want to paint, heal, paint, heal, as with the spot healing and remove tools. Then join my Patreon, which is Patreon com slash deek now let's say we want to get serious about the retouching this guy is a good example also from dreams time and so i'm going to reduce the size of my cursor i'm just doing this by pressing the right the left bracket key in this case but left and right bracket will make the brush bigger and smaller and you can brush of course as well as clicking whatever you want to do you do want to be cautious though bear in mind the bounding box how big the bounding box is getting so it's getting bigger and bigger as i move farther away and so if you ask too much from firefly at a time it's going to give you low res results more on that at my patreon if you're interested by the way i'll click here and shift click like so in order to paint these away so i basically i am doing too much but you know you can get away with it if you want to if you're not worried about the resolution of your results but at whatever point you want to click gender to fill and just let her rip now because I didn't enter a text prompt, Photoshop doesn't have much to go off of except for the area around the brush strokes. So it's paying attention to the pixels around the brush strokes in this case. It goes a little bit in and out as well. And now we have three variations. So keep, uh, keep an eye on the nose. See which nose you like the best. And uh, in my case, I think it was the first variation. I liked a lot, it's nice and smooth, doing some stuff with the lips as well. But now let's say I really wanna get down and I wanna take on his mouth because he's got some, some potential orthodontal problems. And so I'm gonna paint around the mouth. I'm gonna do it carefully. Just I'm not going to go back around so that it goes in and fills it in and I'll click generative fill and press the enter key. Now, again, it's just looking, Photoshop is just looking at the edge of the brush stroke and communicating that information to Firefly. If the teeth are close enough to the edge, it knows that teeth are involved and it does. So it's, it, it, it figured out teeth, but it didn't really figure out anything natural. So these are all, wow. That is my favorite for sure, because he just gobbled up some tin foil and of course stamped an A, a scarlet A in the middle of his teeth. I don't even know what that means, but hey, what if this is too much? It's just too, you know, ridiculous. How's that for a word? Well, then you can change the opacity up here and I wanna show you up here in the options bar and I wanna show you something. I'm gonna zoom out from her and I'll just go ahead and increase the size of my brush stroke and paint around her eyes just by way of example, and notice that it's green. If I don't like green, I could change it to Y indigo, for example. But it's gonna be kind of translucent just so you can see what you're doing. That's not subject to the opacity option right here. But you can change that value or you could just tap four for 40% or 3.3 for 33%, the standard stuff, in other words, but it's not gonna make the brush any more translucent than it was before. It is going to affect the next brush stroke. So you may say, hey, why, Deco, why is this thing, the color, why is that dynamic? I could continue to change it to purple. It'll look a little different, but the opacity is not dynamic. Well, that's because the opacity actually matters. The color you're seeing, that's just for you. That's just to help you out. Whereas the opacity value, notice as I paint more and more brush strokes, it's hard to see. It's a little bit hard to see. Let's see if I can make it out better with 
sea foam is a good one. Then uh, you can see that the opacity values are building up like over her nose, for example, which means that you can integrate the previous details better. So I'm going to switch back to him and paint over his mouth, though I'm going to tap the five key for 50% opacity. And then I will just do the same thing as before. So I'll just paint around his mouth. Photoshop will auto fill and then I'll click generate to fill and let her rip. In other words, I'm not entering a prompt and in this case, not only is it seeing the pixels around the brush stroke, but it's also seeing into the brush stroke because it's translucent. This is a special thing about this tool, by the way. See, it didn't just give me these ridiculous dentures as before. It said, hey, this guy's got a natural gap between his teeth. And so I'll go ahead and keep it. And, you know, variation one is by far the best in this case, but do you see, you can integrate what's going on into your previous results. You can also add text, by the way, you can add a text prompt if you're so inclined. And so what I'm gonna do is press Control D, Command D on the Mac in order to deselect the image. And let's say I wanna make her look a different direction. So not straight at me, in other words, or at the viewer. In this case, I, I painted with 50%. And so that's not necessarily, we'll see how that works. That means it might take into account her existing eye color and stuff like that. But I am gonna ask for her to look a different direction. So can't really do that with Liquify, you can try. Doesn't work very well, but you can You can use Smart Portrait of the neural filters when it works. Sometimes it just makes a mess of things. But here I'm gonna click Generative Fill and I'm gonna uh, paste in a prompt. Eyes looking up and to the right. We'll see, we'll cross fingers together, all of us. And, and and we'll see if this is gonna work because Photoshop doesn't always get up and down right, or at least Firefly is really the one that's making the call in this case. But, and it you never know if it's gonna get left or right right either. And uh, I would say in this case, it's just it's just going it's just going crazy. It's 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 actually going cross-eyed. And so what I'm gonna do is just turn off that layer. If you don't like a layer, and you don't think you're going to get anywhere with it by clicking generate again, then just turn it off or throw it away. It's up to you. And now I'll tap the zero key to take the opacity value up to 100%. And I'll just go ahead and rerun those brush strokes again. I'm just adding to the eyes. As you can see, oh, I painted too far. And so it didn't fill in properly. And so now click generate to fill, enter that same prompt. And then let's see if it does better. Now this time it might not get the irises the right color because it can't see the irises this time around. It can see the eyelashes, so it's gonna give us some brittle eyelashes like we have right now, like we had in the first place. But notice, she's not looking up, but she's looking to her right, so that's something, and her right, and then uh, her right. So we've got three different eye colors, and then if we don't like that, you can click Generate and let it rip again. And so I really want you to think, it's called the Selection Brush, and so you think you're brushing, that's true. You're making a selection, that's true too. But why, you don't need that. What you need is a live retouching tool, which is what you now have in the form of this really actually great new tool. There she is looking to the right. So what do you think? Comment below, not to mention like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And for more info on the selection brush, much more in fact, go to my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.